Now, first of all, if you look at figure 1.4, most importantly, there's the date. And as you can see, 2013, it's the 21st of Feb. So we know it's summer. Okay, that's our first key. Now, think of this as a treasure map. So you need to go and have a look and identify all of the keys that gives you ideas what you're dealing with over here. Okay, because you look at all the circulation patterns as ex being experienced on the synoptic chart, and you need to go and figure it out. It's like basically treasure hunting that we're doing right now. So we have identified that in summer, okay, because the da date is a dead giveaway. It's the 21st of February. We know it's summer. Now, something is brewing on the East Coast, and they've actually, it's got a symbol, as you can see over there, we got perfectly round shape isobars, very close together, with pressure, there's the pressure reading, well below 1,000 hectopascal, and it's been given a name. It's a tropical cyclone, Maruna. Okay. Now, very importantly over here, a tropical cyclone, what do we know? It's a low pressure system. It's an intense, it's a massive, massive storm roughly 600 kilometers in diameter, okay? It brings a hell of a lot of destruction, okay? Wind speeds up to 240 kilometers per hour. It's on the east coast because of warm ocean temperatures above 27 degrees Celsius. What do we know, know about the name? Let me just write it down at the bottom. They say the name is Maruna. So that means we call tropical cyclones according to the alphabet, okay? We name them according to the alphabet to see how many tropical cyclones have occurred during the season. So it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M. Okay, M, so it means, sorry, where am I now? It's the 13th for the season, okay? So it means it was quite a busy tropical cyclone season. Okay, so we identify that. That's a tropical cyclone. Have a look what we have down south of Southern Africa. Okay, we have a mid-latitude cyclone. How do I know that? Because we got our distinct cold front. Attached to it is our warm front. Okay, but now the big question is Great Holes. We don't experience mid-latitude cyclones usually during summer. And this is a summer synoptic chart. Okay. We are not experiencing mid-latitude cyclones. Why? Because have a look over here. What do we have over here? We have the South Indian, South Atlantic, sorry. South Atlantic anticyclone. So what do we know, what does this South Atlantic high pressure system do, the anticyclone do during summer? It migrates down south. So it means it's blocking out these mid-latitude cyclones that we usually experience. Okay, as you can see, we have the South Indian. Anticyclone situated over here on the east coast. Mm, sorry, my spelling is incorrect over here. Okay, and most importantly, as you can see, we know it's definitely summer because what do we have over the interior of Southern Africa? We have a low pressure. Okay, as you can see, we experience low temperatures, oh, a low pressure, apologies, why? Because of warm temperatures. And when the temperature is warm, we experience rising air. Okay. Now, I just want to go over what we've just seen over here. First of all, we identify the date. Okay. This shows it's summer. Then we have identified a tropical cyclone on the east coast. Okay. Perfectly shaped round isobars. The pressure is well below 1,000 hectopascal. The isobars are very close to one another, so we experience very strong winds, okay? 
And as you can see, it's moving east to west. Okay, it's moving in that direction. Why? Because it's moving in the westerly wind, easterly wind belt. Okay, now we have the stationary South Atlantic high pressure system, but it migrated south, blocking out our mid latitude cyclones. Okay. And then obviously we have our South Indian anticyclone or high pressure system on the East Coast. And we have low pressure system, a low pressure system over the interior of Southern Africa. Why? Because it's summer and we experience warm temperatures and the warm temperatures creating rising air. Okay, so we have time for a couple of questions. So just to have a look at the questions that's being asked. 1.4.1, does the map show typical summer or winter condition? This is a given, there's the answer, right? Like I said, it's like Cluedo, it's playing like a map, okay? We just need to go and look for the correct answers. It's all there, being represented on the synoptic chart, okay? And the answer is definitely summer. Our question 1.4.2, draw the symbol present on the synoptic weather map indicating the eye of the tropical cyclone Aruna. Okay, apologies, I see it's Aruna, it's not Maruna. But let's just have a look over here. I just want to wipe it out. There's the eye, it represents the eye of the tropical cyclone. I'm going to try and draw you a better one. Okay. Okay, the symbol represents the eye of the tropical cyclone with the perfectly shaped round isobars. Okay, question 1.4.3. What evidence suggests that tropical cyclone Aruna is in its mature stage? So there's a couple of reasons for it. Okay, and I'm going to write there. First of all, the eye is developed. Let me just write it down at the bottom. There's a well-developed eye. That's the first point. Secondly, I want to go back. The pressure is well below 1,000 hectopascal. It's well below 1,000 millibars or hectopascal. Thirdly, we have given it a name, and the name is Haruna. Okay, and lastly, as you can see, the isobars are very close to one another. So it's definitely, it's in its proper stage, mature stage, as a classified as a tropical cyclone, it's a massive storm. So you can say over there, the isobars are very close to one another. Okay. Now, if you look at question 1.4.4, now, describe the weather associated with the eye of the cyclone. Okay. Now, when we look at a cross-section of a tropical cyclone, okay, we first of all, we got a massive buildup of cumulonimbus clouds. Okay. This is known as the vortex one and vortex two. Okay. Now, there's a clockwise circulation of air, now, this cumulonimbus cloud Okay, it's a build-up because of rising air, because of warm ocean temperatures above 27 degrees Celsius, high evaporation rate. So, we have strong conviction currents being experienced. Rising air. Okay. Now, once in the upper atmosphere, we experience divergence. 
So with the eye, we have experience clear conditions, calm conditions, Okay, because of subsidence taking place. 